I want to take you on a journey. A journey through my experience of the European Championship 2019, which was played from mid-March to end-March. 11 games total and the goal for most people competing there was to qualify for the World Cup. The first 22 spots, the first 22 players would go to the World Cup. So there was a fierce competition and I participated as well in this tournament. And in this video and the ones to come, I would like to share with you five games that I played in this tournament. So we begin with my round number four game against international master Gabriel Flom from Israel. And at this point I had two points out of three. So let's begin. I was playing with the white pieces and started in my usual way 1e4. And my opponent, he plays a lot of different openings. So I was preparing all kinds of things, but what he played in the game, I didn't prepare for the French or more specifically the variation he played, which is one of the sharpest lines there is. It's the Wiener variation here, c5 and I picked up the gauntlet and I played queen g4, which is the most aggressive reply to the setup by black going after these pawns. Now you played c takes d4, so he offers me both these pawns, which is an absolute main line. And I've played this as well before, but I hadn't looked at it. And I figured let's play something else that I'd also played before, but I was hoping he wouldn't be prepared for it that well. So it's the move bishop d3, which is an interesting alternative. Now he replied with queen a5. The alternative would be queen c7, but queen a5 is also one of the main moves. Threatening to take on c3 and winning my rook, so I go knight e2. And black simply castles, and by doing so protects the pawn on g7. And I still knew this position because I had it in another game two years ago and I played bishop g5. Now knight g6 is correct and the position is super sharp. Every single move by both players is quite important, especially for black because as you can see I'm attacking with a lot of pieces already and I have further, option to, further options to improve my attacking prospects. So right now this pawn is hanging and I play queen g3. This is still all preparation, or at least not preparation for this game, but I was still in the book. Knight d7 is once again correct. And now I go h4. Idea is h5 to get rid of this knight defending the king. And in my only other game that I had, my opponent played h5 here, which is a mistake. After that, I could take in g6 play bishop e7, bring the bishop back to b4, win back the pawn, and I was better. In this game, my opponent played it better. He played d takes c3. This is the correct move. So at this point, I'm two pawns down, but I'm going full force f4, protecting this pawn once more and preparing h5. Well, maybe I should say very quickly, why can't black take this pawn? Obviously, if he takes with the d knight, I can go h5, attack the defender of the knight, and I win material. Taking with the g knight is possible, but if the bishop h6, black will lose an exchange. He has to go g6 or first take on d3, since knight g6 would just lose h5 and the attack becomes too strong. Bishop takes g6 and why this crushing through, I meant to say, but the engine tells us rook f6 is still holding here. So this comes as a little bit of a surprise. Then it's more precise to play rook takes h6 first, and this is close to winning for white. So all these options are not that attractive, and d takes c3 is the best move by far, I would say. f4, and now I prepare h5. So he has, to pre he has to play h5 himself. There's no other move. And this is an interesting situation because it looks like white's attack is stopped and he's just two pawns down, but it continues. 
And this is a variation I first learned about in Par Yimar, Par Yimaran Negi's book, 24 against the French, great, great book, opening book from a few years ago. Negi, a strong grandmaster, and he recommended this line. So now queen b6. Of course, I don't want to trade queens, so knight d4. And my opponent played pretty quickly the correct move. Oh, one of the options that black has, knight to b8, the idea to challenge this blockade here with knight c6. And I still kind of knew this position, and I kind of knew king f2 is the move. But I was thinking about doing the game, and actually king f2 is the move that Nigi recommends, but king e2 is stronger, and we'll see why in a moment. So king f2, and now my opponent played knight c6. This is the logical move. And for some reason the engine doesn't run anymore. This is confusing. Hmm. All right, we'll do without engine then, and I'll just say what's up. <laughs> okay, knight c6. So I have to lift the blockade. I take on c6. Pawn takes c6. And now this is the typical idea, to play g4 to once again get this h5 move in. So at this point, I'm three pawns down. And here, by the way, we also see why the king would be better placed on e2 than on f2, because right now I'm in the pin. With the king on e2, I could play queen g3 here, keep the queens on the board and develop a very strong attack. In this case, the queens will come off. So now I went h5. f6 is the only reply that black has. If he goes knight h8, then I can keep going, threatening mate even, and this is not ending well for black. So f6 was played, correct move. And I don't have anything better than to take and play bishop h6. If I take on g6, it's a disaster here if the f takes g5. I mean, I was trying to make something like this work with rook h7 and then checkmating, but then I realized that black can play g3 check here as one option and uh, rook takes f4, rook h4, trading one rook and black's up a couple of pawns and this is pretty much winning for black. So going back to this position, I took on f6 and I play bishop h6, hitting the rook on f8. And the knight obviously is still hanging on g6. So he goes knight e7. I was also considering knight h8, even though it looks a little bit odd, but it's also a move. Here a computer tells me that I should take on b6, take on f8, and then play a4. It's an important move to stop black from going b5. And to have this pawn as a weakness, maybe this pawn as a weakness, and white is supposedly better, but this is just a very messy position. So knight e7 is just fine. Bishop takes f8, king takes f8, and what kind of position do we have on the board? I have an exchange, but black has three pawns for the exchange, and this these pawns are pretty scary. If they get rolling, then I'm in trouble. So I was not feeling too comfortable here, but I saw an interesting way to continue, which is not the best, but it posed problems, which is h6. Computer says I should again take on b6, play a4, but honestly, I would not like to play this position, even though it's supposedly equal. So let's see the game. h6, pretty clear plan, h7, h8, so he has to go king g8, and now I played h7 check, king h8, and rook h6. This was my idea, to activate the rook via the, third, via the sixth rank. And this is the most critical moment in the game. So I would recommend you to pause the video here and find the correct continuation in the game for black, which was not played in the game, which we both missed actually. We both missed the best move here for black. All right, ready to go. 
So the move itself is not spectacular, but the idea is a little bit difficult to see maybe, which is bishop d7. And the point is that if I take the pawn on f6, excuse me, then the rook is being trapped on f6 suddenly. It still continues, I can play rook h1 and I'm, a, I'm still up in exchange, but black still has three pawns and after knight f5 he should be just winning. He takes f5, protected pass pawn here and this position is winning for black. So this would be not so good and instead I should play f5 here. But then also after e5, rook takes f6, e4, white is in trouble. Bishop takes e4, d takes rook f7, knight takes f5, rook takes d7. I'm still in exchange up, but once again we have the situation where black has three pawns for the exchange. Well, two pawns, but this pawn will be gone sooner or later. And he has activated his pieces. He has the square on d4 for his knight. And the pawn actually is a problem for me. I would rather have this pawn gone and then I could create some threats against the black king. So this position is clearly better for black. I didn't see this option and my opponent, fortunately for me, didn't see it either and he played e5. And now the position is winning for white. So I have a question for you. Should I take on b6 first or, or should I take on f6 right away? What do you think? Once again, you can pause the video. So there's a nasty little trap here in the position. If I take the pawn on f6, I, I lose because of g3 check. And that's it. King f3, bishop g4 check. And I cannot defend my queen anymore and black just wins on the spot. Also interesting, king g2, you might say, well, what's the problem? Now if black takes, it's check mate in two moves. But again, black can go bishop h3, defend the eighth rank, and that's it. So I saw that <laughs> and I took on b6 first. Now rook takes f6, e4. Now this also looks very good for black, but what can I do here? Again, take this as training, take this as practice, pause the video, why to play. So the precise way to do this is bishop takes e4, not rook f8 check first, because if the king takes h7, bishop takes e4 check, black has the answer king g7, hitting the rook on f8. So this is why white has to start with bishop takes e4, d takes e4, and now rook f8 check. Pawn has to be taken, otherwise I can queen. And rook f7 check. King g6, rook takes e7, and we see the complications are over. I'm still in exchange up, and I have an active rook on e7. Bishop f5, rook d1, important move, get the second rook in the game, and the threat rook d6 is also quite convincing e3 check and this is another interesting moment and if you want to take this once again as a practice question here why to play what would you do so there are actually two winning moves it's possible to take with the king on e3 but king g3 what i played is much simpler i would say rook takes e3 is not a good option black takes on c2 plays king f5 and is very close to a draw King takes e3 wins, but white has to be precise. King f6 is what I didn't like, and now rook e5, bishop takes c2, rook d6 check, and rook takes c6, rook takes a3, and I think around here I stop, because black keeps this pawn, and if we imagine he moves the bishop and then protects the pawn, I felt like, okay, this is too much, but computer tells us that this is also winning for white. All right. But if you consider king g3, then it becomes clear quite quickly that this is the most convincing move because rook d6 is still a strong threat. And after king f6, what happened in the game, I can now take with the rook on e3. And the king is better placed here defending the pawn on f4. So now bishop takes c2 would be just answered by rook d6. The king cannot step forward because of checkmate. And after king f7, 
I could either take in c3 or take in c6. And I think both are winning and this is it. So I played, no, he played not bishop takes c2 but rook h8. And here I just give a check, take the pawn on c6. Here I repeated moves once. It's just my little my little tick. <laughs> I like to do that well. It also has the benefit of getting some time on the clock. So I like to do it when I get a chance. Rook takes c2 and okay, here I could take immediately effort. First let me play rook c7 check because I figured this is putting his king in a worse position. And it is pretty correct because now I can immediately give check on c6 again. And here I got a little bit lazy also in the moves to follow because I figured, okay, I'm just an exchange up. So I just picked up the pawn, um, but rook e5 would have made my task much easier. Obviously I saw this move, but I, I got annoyed that he can give a lot of checks. And if I go to the third rank, he even takes his pawn, but I can just move towards the rook and that's it. He loses this bishop and g3, this pawn will not give enough counterplay, rook f8. I'll get behind the pawn and just win. So that would have been easier. And the game I still had to do some work. Also because I missed another win in this position for some reason, I don't know. Yeah, I got a little bit lazy or I was a little bit uh, not so concentrated anymore. And good lesson for you guys in this game, it didn't cost me anything but it can cost you half a point or maybe even more if you get um, a little unconcentrated towards the end because you you know the position is winning and it feels like there's so many ways but you still got to finish it off so rook e8 here would be a very good move double threat i think i just didn't see this move for some reason and king h4 Rook takes c8, this doesn't lead anywhere, I can just give a check. So that was a pretty easy win. I played bishop rook c3, which doesn't spoil anything, but I had to do some more work here. Suddenly he brings the bishop to e4 and it's not so easy. But ultimately I got there, so king forward. And here he should try rook b2. He played rook e2 instead but now I get my king even more active and here I play king f5 and my opponent resigned because I will checkmate pretty soon with the two rooks and the king. So I thought that was quite an interesting game, dramatic game, sharp game, resulting out of this Wiener variation and then this very complex position where I'm an exchange up but he has so many pawns and if I don't get them handled I could easily be worse. So the critical moment was this point when I played rook h6 and he didn't find the best reply to that and afterwards it was more smooth, it was a more or less smooth conversion. So that was my round number four game then I had three points out of four and I played against a very strong opponent next and we'll talk about this game in the next video. So let me know if you have any questions about this game and if you're not subscribed yet now's your chance somewhere is a button and I think you also have to click a bell to get notified when I publish new videos and then I'll see you for the next video. Bye bye.